Spring Lake. Definitely sprung a leak. We'll get to that in a little bit. Sun's coming up. We're gonna go check cows. We had one that was working on calving last night. And uh, it's awesome feeling. It's like 50, 54 degrees or something like that. I do got a rifle with me today. I just saw a coyote, but I couldn't get the rifle out of its sheath in time to to get it with all these young calves out here we're gonna have coyote problems right now um luckily he took off down over over there where all the sunflowers at that's not my place i can't go in there and look for him he'd be gone anyway so that's one that got away this morning so i have to get up early tomorrow morning well not get up early but get out here earlier i should say um yeah, let's go. We're gonna go check. All the cows are up there, so I'm thinking there might be a calf up there, a new one. So that's where she was at last night. So we'll go up there and look. She got confused there for a little bit last night. She was like running everywhere. I think she already had a calf. I'm like, dummy, you haven't had it yet. But anyway, that's what happens. They get, yeah, that's an older cow. Not old, but she's had a couple few calves. She should know better. But it feels great out here today. I love this kind of weather. And it's gonna be like this all week. So maybe we'll, this will help, help you know, get these temperatures down. I got hay out. I don't think they figured it out, figured that out yet either. These cows are really beginning to challenge what I think their uh, <laughs> their mentality is, right? <laughs> so yeah. I put nice hay out for them. They don't even go over and look. I guess they don't think it's over there, but there's liquor feet, so they'll make it over there eventually. Oh. But yeah, beautiful this morning. Man, it's cold down here in this bottom, too. You get down in these bottom areas, it's even colder. The air is sinking big time. And it uh, feels really good. I was looking to see if there's going to be another coyote coming out. Because sometimes they travel in, in twos and threes, but I didn't see another one. So. With the full moon out, they could be actually moving a lot earlier. Yes. Here's the moon. Up there. Nice full moon all night. So I'm pretty sure they've been traveling all over the place at, last night. And that cow's up there in that same spot. So let's go see if we get a calf. Hopefully. Hopefully live calf. That's all we asked for. Oh, anyway. If I drop the GoPro all of a sudden, it's because I see a coyote, I'm about to take a shot. <laughs> <coughs> the thing is, you have to be careful out here. I know there's so many houses around, and I got to know where my cows are at, where my equipment's at. And I got a couple ways I can take shots. That's it. So. If there is a coyote, I gotta wait for it to clear certain areas or before I can take a shot. You can't just shoot towards people's houses. That's just stupid. And there's a lot of people that do that. But uh, I won't. So I'll I'll wait. Let it get in another day. But let's see what we got up here. We're, you know, we've had a couple of new calves born recently. <clears throat> Of course, we had the three uh, half chingadetas up here. And we got some new calves. This bull's drawing out really small calves, our bull is. Uh, so he's more than likely heifer safe, I would think. Um, just know, just seeing his calves, the size so far. I mean, they're small. So that's a good thing. I really, there for a while, I thought maybe I should get a bull throw some bigger calves. I did that. Uh-uh, no, 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 no. That's not fun. This guy, he's doing good for us, so. though. Looks like she's, yeah, she's got a calf. So I see a calf up there. There's a bull calf right here at Bourne. This is at uh, uh, 
Mav Charisma, uh, uh, Rose Cow, Sullivan Rose Cow. That's a bull calf. And he's pretty, yeah, we're gonna see how he does. That's the one that could end up staying a bull calf. You never know. Especially these birth weights. I, mean, I, I like that. Good calf. And by the way, that's probably the richest milk, milk and cow we got out here. So he's gonna grow. Cause everybody, all the calves last year were drinking off her. Cause she has such rich milk. If they start doing it this year, I'll probably pull them separately. Put them in a separate area. Cause I want him, I want to see his full, full potential. And that's a pretty decent sized calf. And that's a heifer. I can tell. I think I think it looked like a heifer from here. Yeah, another heifer. So, whew, she's nice and upheaded. Look at that. That spells fancy right there. She's young, but she's fancy looking. Let's see if I can get a photo on my phone. Oh, she got in the way. Oh, she's just like her mother. Got some bone, deep red cherry coloring. And that's what we needed right there. That's a heifer, I can tell by looking. You always tell you got that hair sticking out right behind that tail. You don't really have to see much more. And you can tell by looking at the head. I always look at the head on these calves especially. Those bull calves, they come out, they got a little bit of curly hair on them. But uh, she's 100% heifer. Oh, yeah. She's active. Well, she's going to be a, she's gonna be something, I think. I think. I think we got something there. I love that uh, front end design, that, that, where the neck comes out of the shoulders that this bull is putting on. Now he's got to see how the other pieces fall into place. I think they will. So, yeah, that's good. Got another heifer. So we've had out of that out of our bull, we've had what, three three live heifers and one bull calf. We had two other heifers born. Uh, that uh, Rome Princess cow down there. She had twins, and uh, first one came out one day and it was stillborn. And I said, "Well, okay, I'm sorry about that girl." So I buried that calf. And uh, the next day came out, she had another one out here in the middle of the field over here. And it was still born also. So, and they were both heifers. One was red and white and one was roan. Beautiful, beautiful calves. I don't know what happens. Sometimes you get twins, you don't know. You know, they get, they get tangled up or something. So anything can happen. Um, uh, she's never had, a, had any problems like that before. And she's never had twins before. She's never had stillborn calves. She's always had a calf every year. Uh, that we've gotten our bread, so uh, Anyway, so that's good news. We got another heifer and she's stout Of course, I would expect that out of her. That's a very very big cow very stout cow And he did moderate her some I can tell already by looking he said calf because I know what her calves usually look like And uh, so that works it works very good Happy with that Woo! <laughs> Fresh calf poop. A little bit runny though. Probably that calf right there. He's, he's gonna be getting that rich milk, so we'll have to keep an eye on that, make sure we don't get scours going. It has some rich milk in her. And the other calf, I think, is already, I bet she's over there already somewhere, heading down to the down there. Yeah, I'm happy. So what we got to do today, it's Friday, uh, I have to go here, it's not a good little leak over here, it's been leaking for a couple of days now, um, I have to go get some pipe, some PVC connectors and other things to fix that, and uh, I don't have a uh, sump pump anymore, uh, I think I burned mine up uh, back during the winter. So, uh, I need to go to another, another sump pump also, make it easier to pump that out. Now, to get in there and actually work on that, what I have to do is 
up there at the front of the road is the main shutoff for the line that runs all the way down the road. And then it goes over on the other side of that big tree over there. And it comes straight across here, all the way down to there, then down to the barn. So what I do is I shut it off up there. I got shut off valves in the house. So let's shut them off. And then we'll have to open, pointing. It's my pistol, my bag. Um, then we'll have to uh, open up the valve down here in the barn, the water hose, to uh, drain the line out. And so we shut the one, we, sh we shut the one off the main up there. If I were to just cut this line at that point, then all that water in the house would drain back in there. So it'd take a while to get it all out. And that's a you know hot water heater and the old part of the house, original part of the house. And of course we got lines that run upstairs and stuff too. So we'll shut off those right there. They go into the house, keep all that water from draining back out also. And then what we do over here, by opening this one down here, we let all the water that's in the line go down there. Because this is downhill from over there. That's the plan. So, so we need to get glue. It's like my glue, you know, probably got damaged during the, uh, the freeze out, the week long freeze. And uh, there's a couple other things we need to get, like some PVC adapters, things like that. So we'll go get those here in a little while. So we're out here looking uh, where we're doing some clearing to put a fence in. So you can see over there, we got H braces down there that we're gonna put together. And then uh, we'll tie it into that corner down there. And later we'll fix that fence going this way and that way, of course. And I'll put another pole at the end. So we'll have four poles in down here eventually and tie all that together, make it, make it right, make it strong. Uh, the fence going that way is pretty tight. It's, and it needs to be redone. We redid it. We did it, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, but we didn't keep all the brush out of it. And so you can see what happens here. This honey locust starts growing and it takes over. Okay. So that's somebody calling, so I had to take, take that call. Uh, but there yeah, goes a duck flying over. Not a wild duck. It's a domesticated duck that just travels between all the ponds out here. There's a couple of them that do that. Uh, let's see here. So yeah, we gotta get all this down and stacked up. I wanna, I mean, we can push it all this way if we want and then push those piles together. So make just a couple of piles only and uh, make it manageable. So we'll figure that out. Uh, which way is best on that and this area is I don't want to bring my tractor into uh, because these thorns will put holes in my tires the small mesquites are really not going to do that much to my uh, tires but man these things these things here I mean look, look at this they're they're massive look at that that's a young you know, let me see if y'all can see that yep that's a young tree. Look at that. It's got a thorn going out and thorns going sideways. And the older, the older branches, you can see them in there. Man, they're, you know, three, four inches long. And you get into some of these bigger ones over here. I mean, they're just, just massive thorns. Oh my gosh. I mean, just incredible. Yeah, this tree is very inv invasive. Um, what I want to do is just get them down. And then I can manage them going forward. I'm just going to spray and spray and spray to manage them. They'll die easy if you spray them. They're not like mesquites. Mesquites, just, mesquites are tough. <laughs> They're hard to get rid of. We're doing, we're doing better about getting rid of them. We got, you know, that Sendero is a really good product. That's uh, working on them really good, actually. Uh, better than Remedy and Reclaim did. Um, but these right here... You spray them, usually they die. They don't they don't come back. So the main thing is getting them out. But I had to get them down because they were just so big and we had an opportunity, having a skid steer here for a while, uh, to get them down. I wish I, if I had sprayed them uh, during the summer, or you know, back during the midsummer, they'd be dead right now. And then that skid steer would come through and knock them down and pile them up. But that means also those storms would probably fall off on the ground and end up in my tires later. So that's a catch 22. Yeah, so main thing is get all this stuff pushed together in a couple piles right here. And then once we get done with this this side over here, 
which is almost done. We're real close. We just gotta get that, that back there. This area is pushed together. And then go out here and pick up all the loose stuff and drag it into the, you know, put it into the piles and get all these stumps and stuff over here like this. Get all this stuff up. This side's done. So what we can do then is I can come in here, once I get the fence up, I can I can plow I can plow this right that may and then I'll plow around all these piles we got also and we can start burning this stuff get it burned out once it's burned out I can come through with my tractor and actually move the dirt around because then you know I'm not as worried or I might rent like this skidster still might be here I don't know uh, but we can rent one too we'll rent a skidster and bring it in and have it do its thing. Or a little bulldozer or something. I know there's a neighbor that has got a bulldozer that might rent one to us or I'll go rent one or something. We'll figure that out when the time comes. Because um, I know next summer we're going to rent an excavator and a dozer. You can see that's a dam in my pond right there. Well, that's going to be, when I get done with that pond, it's going to be a lake when I get done with it. That's what it's going to be. And it's gonna come back a good ways. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a lot of land up, but I want something that holds water that's deep enough to where I can have fish in it. So it's probably gonna come right in here somewhere and take up a good portion of this bottom that's right out here. So it's gonna go this way around that way. So we're gonna need an excavator to do that with. <clears throat> so we're gonna excavate out here, dig it, get a bigger bulldozer this time so we can actually push that stuff around easier. So I want to get this pond done, make it into a lake uh, this next summer. And the other side of my creek over here, I'm going to put a smaller pond for the cows and for duck hunting. I, I love duck hunting. That's really the only thing I like hunting is ducks. And I like quail hunting too. I love quail hunting I love eating quail. Those things are awesome. You ever look at some of these calves? And mamas are, I think, are, I think they're planning on setting them in here for now, maybe. I, I imagine they'll move to the tree as soon as the sun gets up a little bit. Look at that. There's one right there. That's a little, little bitty girl. It's a, that's a small, small calf. We we'll see how she grows. I mean, a lot of times you want them coming up small and then they grow. Sometimes you want them coming up big and they grow too much, right? But look at that one up there. Now that one, that's what I'm looking for. And I'm looking for that size. To, and I know out of that cow, that calf's going to grow. I can tell by looking at the bone, looking at the leg set. She's going to grow. But the birth weight was easy. It's easy on the mother. She's up. You know, everything's working good on this one. So I'm thinking, you know, we, we might have hit a home run here. Who we'll know. We we'll know when she's about, we'll be able to tell when she's about four or five months old for sure. But just looking at her, she's pretty darn fancy already. So we will see. We'll keep an eye on this one for sure because she's pretty darn good. And I think I think she's gonna be pretty good. It looks like that bull we got is stamping a good front end on him. Good neck extension. And you know, we'll watch how they develop and everything going forward and things like that. But yeah, we, we like that calf a lot. I don't know why she's doing it. Look at that. That calf is two days old. That's a darn good calf. And then the bull calf, I think, is still over there. The one that could make a bull. You never know. So this is on the back side of that fence area we're going to put up. So all this has got to be done next. All right. Whether we do it with this skid steer now or we do it later, this is going to have to be done. And, uh, you know, if we have to wait to get a bulldozer right here, that'll be next summer. We can do that. That's not a problem. But we'll get it done. So the fence, that fence that says running all the way from down there, it's going to run all the way up here. 20 foot gate opening here. This is into our old pen. We had one running show cattle a lot. This is our turnout pins over here. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll run. We gotta put this fence back up also. So the easiest way to get this going, and I got these uh, poles cut already. 
So the poles, the poles for the H's are cut. So all I gotta do is get them welded in, which I'll do. So I wanna, we're gonna, we're gonna brace these like we're supposed to. This one looks like it's popping up a little bit. It's kind of high. A little bit worried about that now. I'm gonna have to reset this corner. I don't know. But I got another pole goes here, and two on that one, and then two and two down there. I think we got a 16 or 20 foot opening down there. And then reset the T post in and uh, get the fence up on here also. So, wire can be field fence with uh, three strands of barbed wire, field fence, three strands of barbed wire. And then what that'll also do is we'll be able to run electric out of the barn, and uh, especially once you get the new barn. But even out of the old barn, I'll be able to run electric over to here, run it across the top, and then go underground here and across the top, and even down in the mid part to keep uh, you know animals off. But things are looking good. Things are working out pretty good. We, we're having fun out here now with this cooler weather. I know it's going to get warm this weekend. But it's about 59, I think it was about 59 degrees this morning. Yesterday morning was like 50, 49 or 50. It was, I mean, you can see, you can see your breath. And that's, uh, that's pretty awesome this time of year in Texas. Um, yeah. So like I said, we got hay out. We got liquid feed out. We get the water over there because as soon as I close all this off, their source of water is going to be there. And that's going to be it. And then what we do is we work towards fencing, fixing this fence that goes across the back of this pen. So pulling these T-posts, resetting them, and uh, putting in the proper eight, double eight, the double uh, horizontals. Yeah, yeah, horizontals in and down there also, down there, down there, and go all the way around that part. And I don't really need a center, but I think I'll, I'll probably go ahead and put it back in because I'll actually tear down that old lean-to deal there and actually build something different because I need to move that down this way. Um, and we, we, we'll, uh, we'll uh, rebuild that uh, out of metal and everything. And uh, so that could actually be the bullpen for temporary, you know, while we got cows in the winter pen or whatever. And uh, we'll go from there. 